part two of a special report we brought you at the top of this newscast. We showed you body camera video of a young man named Terrence McKinney, whose first encounter with law enforcement involved him on drugs and hallucinating, also fighting back at the officers, trying to get him to safety. Well, now we look at what happened next and how Terrence turned this awful night into a way to help a Spokane police program working to keep high school students out of trouble. The Youth Police Initiative puts cops and kids in the same classroom for some frank discussions about driving and drugs, race, and responsibility. The five-day class also gives students a chance to weigh in about excessive force and what teens can expect if they're ever contacted by police. xy 4 Jeff Humphrey working for you to go inside the YPI program. Jeff? And Nadine, so far, more than 250 Spokane students have graduated from the Youth Police Initiative. In fact, there's a class going on this week at Lewis and Clark High School. YPI is changing the way that kids look at cops and vice versa with some real-life tales from Spokane streets. Parents, you don't want to hurt yourself. Bro. Nope, I know that. You got to stay here, though. This is Terrence McKinney tripping on acid and mushrooms. The ambulance came and I got in there. I died twice in there. And I didn't even know I died. This is the same 21 year old talking to students at Rogers High School about the dangers of mind bending drugs. That summer, I was like, before I leave, I'm going to do drugs one last time. And I, I went and hung out with some friends like at these apartments. Did he break anything? When McKinney started freaking out, his friends abandoned him, but Spokane police didn't have the luxury of running away. What drugs did he take? It didn't take very long for officers to realize that Terrence was suffering a life-threatening emergency. I'm in excited delirium here. There was no reasoning with Terrence. Officer Chris Johnson knew he had to get McKinney to the emergency room and fast. We need to get you over to the ambulance. We need to get you to the hospital to get you checked out. But Terrence didn't go to the hospital without a fight. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. Move back. Had we not shown up and you got medical attention, you could have died just from that. Earlier this month, Terrence watched the body cam video of the officers who saved his life. If someone attacked me like that, I would be scared for my life and I would think like I would have killed him. Like, and I just want to thank you guys for having enough heart to know that. Yeah, this is someone's kid. The patrolmen seemed to accept what Terrence had to say, but they wanted something else. I don't know if you want to use your video because it's, you know, a bad point in your life, but it could be something that you can show to these kids that are doing this stuff and say, I took these things and this is what it did to me that night, one time. And that's how Terrence wound up here, talking to students enrolled in the Youth Police Initiative. My mom gets scared when I'm gone for like a day, and I take her love for granted and go out and do all this dumb stuff. The YPI class pushes making good choices and resisting peer pressure. I'm trying to be cool with my friends, whatever, just chilling, like, I'm thinking it's no big deal, I'm gonna be okay, and then like, I could've been dead right now, and I'm lucky to speak in front of you guys today. The dozen YPI students then take in Terrence's body cam video. A guy who's been tased twice has a lot of street cred with the kids. Just be smart about the decisions you make and think about your family and stuff and like how would they feel if you died that day? Because there's it all. All it takes is just one f up, and then your life's over right now. Terrence's second shot at life is the police department's way of showing these students officers don't come to work just to thump on people. They're not going to show you that. They're going to show you this and the wrestling around and you know, all the excitement. The class says if cops have a bad rap with kids, it's because the media bombards them with negative stories about police brutality. Give me medical assistance, please. I don't want to die. So the officers try a little role playing so students can better understand police tactics. Hey, hey, don't, hey don't be pushing. Us. Don't be pushing. In this case, a call about two teens in a park with a rifle. You're not under arrest. I'm just detaining you long enough to make sure, okay, you don't have any weapons. I'm going to ask you, okay, did you have a gun? Did you see someone else with a gun? Did you see somebody doing anything out of the ordinary in the park? This type of thing. All right, guys? So we're constantly trying to investigate, but just cooperate with us. If you cooperate with us, man, we're going to be nice to you. 99% of the time, just cooperate. 
Not all of the goodwill goes down in class because this is an after-school activity. Officer Jennifer Daru likes taking kids home in her patrol car. The ultimate goal is to break down barriers and build trust and relationships between police officers and these kids. And what better place on the ride home? Because they start talking to you, they open up even more, and it's just it showcases that relationship. And the honest, respectful approach strikes a chord with today's hard-to-fool teenagers. You're learning a lot about, you know, how cops really think and like I don't know like a lot of the reasons they do things and the cops seem to learn more about the pressures and problems kids face these days getting to talk with them one-on-one -on -one, you break down some of those barriers and you realize that we actually have a lot in common finding that common ground before something bad happens can help ward off life-changing events like what happened to Terrence more than ever before teens really need to be able to trust police because sometimes parents don't have all the answers realistically I have not met one bad cop here and if you actually got to know them it they're actually good people just like you and me in fact, having gone through their youth police initiative classes, a lot of these teens now considering a career in law enforcement, just like Terrence McKinney. And so here is Mr. McKinney, right out of the youth police initiative class that you were helping teach today, I think is at Lewis and Clark High School. Terrence, you've been nice enough to let us use you as a poster boy of what not to do with your life. Has it been tough on you? What's the, been the reaction? Um, it's been uh, tough on my family, have my brothers watch me go through all this, you know, and showing them like I have to grow up and like put the kid decisions behind me. And it's been hard for us a total because like there's some months where like I would have to choose to pay, pay the my my attorney and whether to eat or not. So. Yeah, and you're not out of the woods on that yet. What do you think about the YPI program? Is that reaching kids? Yeah, I want to commend the officers for talking to the police and doing all the things they do because like I can really see kids changing while we're in there from like the way they view cops and the way they view like life. Instead of having to get high all the time to have fun, they see a better way to outlook. And I, I have seen them changing in class as well, but a lot of it has to do with the strength of your testimony. You're a wonderful guy to do this for us. You're really helping the community. It's, it's very nice to have you in our story. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. All right, Nadine, back to you, miss. Oh, thanks both of you, Jeff and Terrence, for sharing that story. And even though Terrence certainly is apologetic about what happened that night, as he mentioned, his legal problems far from over. In the course of fighting the officers, trying to take him to jail, well, Terrence committed a pair of felonies. He was booked into jail on two counts of assault the very next day. Prosecutors reluctant to drop those charges, and if convicted, Terrence could lose his scholarship and a lot of employment opportunities in the future. So right now, he is enrolled in a diversion program where those charges could be dismissed, but only if he completes community service, including his work with the Spokane Police Department's Youth Police Initiative.